Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen and welcome. So today it is International Women's Day. So happy Women's Day to everyone. I think it is a wonderful day obviously it's really good to have a specific day as a reminder to celebrate every woman around us um, but I thought that the best way for me to do this this year because it's the first time I am on YouTube and I have a um, platform to say a big thank you to every woman who have been in my life and this is really interesting because it's a big surprise so no one knows that this video is coming out I have been telling everybody that I am making a special video for Women's Day but it's a surprise video um, so everybody who has been mentioned in this video has no clue that this video is coming out um, so it's like a little present from me to you to say thank you for impacting my life in the best way possible so what I'm going to do in this video is tell you the 10 lessons I have learned from the 10 women who have been the most um, impactful in my life who had played the major parts basically in my life and the 10 lessons I have learned from them that have shaped my personality and who I am today. I will try to go through it in chronological order as to when I met them in my life. So let's get started. Obviously, first woman I've met in my life is my mother. So my mom is very different to me, I would say, in many, many ways. Um, and Obviously, she's the first one I met. So my mom is really cool. Um, she definitely is the source of all the sassiness that both my sister and I have. Um, but the one big lesson I've learned from my mom from a very young age is that there is always a way. So whenever I would be faced with setbacks or disappointments or things that were not working out for me, she would always be like, well, let's think, can you do this? Can you do that? What about this? What about that? And she is a bit of a go-getter. And I think I've gotten that from her I hope uh, but yeah I've always been a bit amazed by her whatever problem I will have and I will talk to her she immediately switches to problem solving and she has shown me how this can lead to finding a way it might be it might be completely different to the way that I planned or the way that I wanted but there is a way basically and I've seen that in action from a very young age and I have to say that this is probably the reason why now, whenever I'm faced with problems, other than stressing about it, I do tend to switch to problem solving very quickly. So thank you, mommy. And the second one is obviously my older sister. So my older sister, Sarah, is basically my third parent. So from a very young age, she's been there. We have a big age gap um, of six years. So she's always been the big sister. Um, and it's very interesting because our relationship evolved right throughout our lives. It started off as me being the annoying baby little sister. And then um, we always had, we were in different schools. So as soon as I started primary school, she started secondary school. When I started secondary school, she was finishing and then she went to university. So we never had overlapping life experiences kind of thing um, but she's always been a guide but in terms of the biggest lesson I have learned from her it has to be you know after I went to uni and then we just became friends and um, then as a friend she will give me advice and I think the most important advice she's given me is believe people when they show you what they mean and who they are and it's always been very useful I think especially as adults and she has always told me that you know as you grow up your circle of friends is going to shrink um, but the quality of the people will improve and this is something I have definitely experienced firsthand now um, but having had someone prepare me for this kind of emotionally and you know, it helps when you start seeing that, okay, I don't have that much in common with a lot of people now and I am losing connections with people who used to be my friends. But then having that perspective that it happens, it's life, we grow up, life gets in the way and you don't necessarily keep everyone in your life forever. And I think that has been a very useful lesson, especially, you know, when you're struggling with what someone has done to you, etc. And then she's always been, well, it's OK. It's life. It happens. Move on. There'll be other people. It doesn't matter. The people who matter will stay. And I think that has been a very useful lesson. So thank you. We'll do. The third one is um, 
my grandmother from my mother's side. So I unfortunately did not get to meet my dad's mum because she passed away way before my dad got married. Um, so the only grandmother I've known is my mum's mum, who, like, we call them nanny, right? So my nanny was a very interesting woman. <laughs> and the one advice that I remember from her is really funny, to be honest. I think that day she was probably annoyed by my grandfather, but the one advice she gave me, she was like, listen. Um, she was very serious as well. <laughs> she was like, when you look for a man, do not go for looks, because what are you gonna do with looks? She was like, you know what is a good looking man? It's basically just a pile of sh wrapped up in pretty wrapping paper and I remember finding that really funny because you know as a kid you just go for like you take it very literally so I was just picturing that and I remember laughing so hard but now I understand what she meant she meant more that you know looks don't necessarily mean anything you need to be sure of the personality of the person or something but um while she was think, saying that, I think what was funny also was that my grandfather was like, well, you're basically saying I'm good looking, so thanks. Um, so that was a funny interaction that I was part of, but important life lesson anyway. And then the next one is my friend Yashna. So Yashna and I were in high school together, and I think I've mentioned her in many, many videos. And she and I both studied in the UK, um, so when I was in Oxford, she was in Sheffield, and then she moved to Edinburgh, and I was in Cambridge, and then she was in London, but now um, she's moved to Mauritius, and I am in Dubai. So we are now living in different countries for the first time, but she has been very, very instrumental in my life. We have a very strong bond, and I think the one lesson I have learned from her is how to give tough love, right? And I think this is very important because it is very easy to be supportive and to be loving, but in order to call someone out when they're doing something that is not good for them, or um, trying to be very honest with your friend can be quite hard, or even your loved ones. But with her, it's always been 100% honesty. And she does it in such a way that you do not feel attacked, you do not feel unloved, and you don't feel that the person is judging you. You just feel like this is coming from a genuinely good place because they care about you and they see your potential, they know what matters to you, what your values are, and if you yourself are compromising them, then they are there to bring you back, you know? And having that reminder has kept me grounded throughout my life. And she's basically my rock and I am just so grateful to have her. And I hope that this has impacted me in a way where now I can also make sure that I am being honest with my friends and I am telling them when, you know, I feel like what they're doing is going to be long-term detrimental to them. And it is not about judging and it is not about telling them what to do. It is just reminding them that this is what's gonna happen. These are going to be the consequences. This is what you usually care about. I'm just reminding you, if you're still gonna make the decision to go ahead with what you were doing, that is fine. I will support you unconditionally with love, but I just want to remind you. And I think that's a very, very important aspect of every relationship. So thank you, Coco. The next one is my friend Mehreen, who I met at Oxford. And she has probably been my best friend since then. And the interesting part about our relationship is that she is a friend, but she also feels like family, like my sister. So she was older than me when I started Oxford. She was starting her second degree at Oxford. Um, but for some reason we bonded and I was this little freshy, fresher, <laughs> you know, first time in the UK, first time at uni. And um, she really took me under her wing and basically taught me a lot of things. For example, I used to say orange because I speak French. And she was like, what is that? She used to bully me, let's be honest. But <laughs> she has helped me at every stage of my life when it was important. What I learned from Mehreen for sure is how to be a good, supportive friend as a girl, 
right? And this is very important because um, being a friend has very different meanings, right? It can be having friends together, being there in their bad times, being there to support them, and you know, just generally caring about their well-being. But with her, like, I, I used to have a lot of little problems, and as we've discussed many times, I overthink, I will worry, I will spiral, but every time she would just be there to tell me, okay, what is the issue? I will solve it. And these were not just words for her. Whenever she would offer to help me, she actually did. And that has been a huge deal for me. So for example, um, I was moving. So when in Oxford, every term you have to pack up everything and leave your room. And obviously I'm an international student, so I can't take everything back with me. And they give us very like limited storage of like two pieces per person or something. And I had a mini freezer and I was like, what do I do with it? And she said, okay, I'll take it because she was a grad student and she didn't have to leave her flat. So she said, just, just bring it to mine. And because of how things worked out, the only time I could give her the freezer was um, in the morning before I flew back to Mauritius. And she woke up at 6 a.m., came to get the freezer. She's not a morning person, didn't say a single word to me, but she came to pick it up and <laughs> she thought it was a fridge. She put her milk in it <laughs> and the milk froze. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so you see like just having someone there to, and I just know I can rely on her anytime, right? So for example, when I had to move to Dubai and I needed, you know, someone to move with me and I messaged her and she was like, cool, don't have holidays, I'll figure it out. And she came with me and she helped me do everything. She came here, she was like, look, we are here to help you settle. So don't worry about me. We're going to go look for your house. We're going to help you settle, do all your admin. And it's just having this friend there for you is just incredible and i hope that she has taught me how to be this kind of friend to other people and to herself and this is one thing that is very high priority for me is to be a good friend and then going to the end of like my oxford time my other friend nabila came into the picture and um nabila is just incredible she is so funny she's probably the funniest person i've met she cracks me up so hard but um she is incredible and with her it's very clear the lesson that i think everyone who meets her will learn from her is just to be kind she is so kind it's incredible and she can be kind in situations where i would have punched the person that i would not have even thought twice about it but she will just be so kind. She has, she shows kindness to everyone, irrespective of who they are. And this is very important. And like, imagine, like, how can you be kind to everyone? How do you do it, Nabs? Like, it's just so hard. But like, even to me, like every birthday she's made is so special ever since I've met her. And, you know, she she knows how, what the little things are that matters to someone. And she will make sure that she expresses her love in these ways. And whenever she meets strangers on the street, they just fall in love with her immediately. And I'm not surprised, she's just too kind. And whenever like someone is struggling with something or someone is overwhelmed with something, she will take it onto her. And sometimes it's a bad thing, right? Because she does work herself to the bone, but I think it's just so beautiful to be surrounded by this kind of energy because at the end of the day, what are we here for, right? We're here to create bonds that last, have good relationships with people, be happy, help others. Like, it's just about taking you out of this very self-absorbed lives that we all live, right? And it's just such a good reminder. Her kindness just always makes me feel good and makes me very hopeful about the world. So thank you, Nabs. And then in between Oxford and Cambridge, I was Mauritius in one year um, because basically after Oxford, I was meant to go back to Oxford for a PhD, but then my funding fell through like a week before I was meant to apply for my visa. So it was way too late then to sort out anything else. And I had already rejected my Cambridge offer to accept the Oxford one. So basically it was too late to do anything. So then I had this one year in between. Both offers for Oxford and Cambridge were deferred for me for the year after. So I knew that after that one year, I could 
potentially go back if I sorted out the money. Um, but then that one year was very stressful, right? Because there were so many big questions. I should probably make a video about that. Um, but yeah, it was a year of uncertainty, not knowing, you know, am I going to go back to Oxford? Am I going to figure out Cambridge? Um, which one do I want to go to? Or even, you know, what about if I just find a job? And it was just so uncertain. I didn't know what was happening. I was constantly stressed. And I was talking to a lot of people back home in Mauritius about potential jobs and stuff. And I was sending my CV around, um, having different meetings with different companies and stuff, but nothing concrete was coming out of it. And then um, I got a text from a number that I didn't know. And um, the person was telling me that they received my CV and they would love to have a chat with me. Um, so do, if I wanted to grab a coffee or something. And then I figured out that who they are. Her name is Mariki. And we ended up having a coffee. And oh my goodness. So she doesn't remember who forwarded her my CV. Till date, we don't know. She is an incredibly achieved woman. Um, she's already had her PhD done. She's like, she has her own business. She works in different things. She helps a lot of people around. She's basically all, an all round really incredible woman. And we had such a great chat. And it was so interesting because obviously she's not originally from Mauritius, but she's living there and working there now. Um, and I was telling her about my journey and she was just incredibly supportive. And the one big lesson I learned from her, I mean, even till date she's in my life and she's, she's incredible. We are basically friends now. Um, I would say that she is my mentor. She's always been. And she is just so supportive. She, the kind words that she says to me always makes me feel so good about myself. But anyway, um, the one thing I've learned from her is because I was so worried about everything. Her one advice was stop chasing. She was like, stop chasing, you know, jobs or like um, the, the PhD or like things like that. Don't worry about opportunities that are going to come. She was like, just focus on yourself. Appreciate your strengths, appreciate what, like your achievement and value yourself. And then she was like, just keep working on yourself and opportunities will come. She was like, yes, you have to do your part. You have to apply, you have to look for what things are, but don't hold on to like this hope of like, I need to get this. What if I don't get this? What, what else am I gonna get? She was like, you don't know the existence of opportunities that will come to you. And that has that completely changed my attitude towards things, right? So for example, there was a company in Mauritius that I thought would be very cool to work for. They, they are in the biomedical uh, field and they are basically the only one. So I kept like, you know, trying to contact the HR and like talking to different people there. And then she was like, why are you doing this? It's because they don't know who you are. And then she was just like, just have a, just call them randomly, talk to like the manager or something and just tell them, who you are and what you've done. And I did that and then I had an interview and they made me a job offer after like one call or something. And obviously I didn't stay because I moved to Cambridge after that, but it works, right? Just, you know, appreciating um, and valuing what you've already achieved, right? And then just knowing that, okay, this is what I have to offer. If they accept it, great. If they don't, it says nothing about my achievement and it doesn't say anything about the future for me. It just means this was not a good match. So we're gonna go look for another good match. And just, you know, this, I think it's kind of related to this whole like manifestation thing, right? Um, I mean, that's not what she was saying, but me thinking about um, just putting good vibes out there, knowing, appreciating who you are, being confident in that and then, and then going out, not going out, being like, oh my God, I need them. Um, they don't need me. And you know, they, they can have better people than me. It's like, this is not the right attitude. So she's shown me to value who I am. And like rejection is not an issue. Rejection is just that, you know, it's not a good match. And I've done this whole video about how rejection is redirection. This definitely comes from her. Um, but yeah, she is, incredible um having a woman mentor honestly is just crazy good but yeah thank you mariki and then after that i went to cambridge to start my phd and my research group had two female professors who were the kind of like joint pis of the group and um one is called ruth one is called serena 
and again i was so lucky it's just so different being managed by women and they are so inspiring right honestly they are they are literally so inspiring every month you'll get an email that oh ruth won this medal serena won this medal ruth has been declared this serena has been declared this and in the science world they're basically superstars and that is incredible and even when we used to go to like international conferences and stuff everyone's like oh you work with ruth and serena and it's just yeah they're always mentioned together by the way and they they are just super achievers right they've always been like their whole journey is so packed with achievements and it is really really inspiring but the main lesson i learned from them is how to be humble with your achievements because i remember just like every time the number of times i've had to send them emails to congratulations is mad i should have had a template um but when you would email them they'd be like oh yeah but you know this is this is a group's work or yeah this is nice or like they will never brag about things you would not even know what they won like, it's just incredible and like oh it's just it's crazy like serena was like awarded something by the queen and like you just never know you never know they'll never tell you you need to find out but it's just the humility and that is not just about their reaction to when people say congratulations right but it's just in their personality in the way they deal with others in the way they deal with students um like imagine being that um super high achiever but then you are having to deal with me as a little first year phd who doesn't know anything and who just asks really basic questions and having to teach me very basic things of like you need to have a comma here <laughs> <laughs> you know and but they are still very patient and they're so willing to share all of their knowledge and just having a conversation with them was incredible so there was the surgeon who used to help me on my phd and i just remember one time we had a meeting with ruth where ruth was going through um a big chunk of my thesis and the surgeon was trying to help and then afterwards he was like oh my god ruth is just such an intelligent woman he was like i would not even have considered the things that she's mentioning um but she just has such a holistic understanding and knowledge of everything and i just remember thinking that's so true and i was so lucky to learn from them generally about the science stuff but i think also just the life skills of knowing how to be humble in your day-to-day -day life because humility is something that i think is very underrated in today's time everyone is very self-absorbed and when we are self-absorbed it's very normal to think that you're better than other people or um to act in a way that make other people feel like you think you're better and i think now that i am in the public sphere it is very important to remember to be humble um and to actually practice humility so this is something i've learned from them different from the phd but yeah and we had the best time they i think uh they call us the trouble maker year me and my friends who started the phd together um and we we even made the group picture fun as you can see um we decided that everyone would wear burgundy we didn't tell Ruth and Serena because we wanted them to dress differently and they thought that it was like an act of rebellion it wasn't um and the group was so much fun unfortunately because of covid we all we as in the people who graduated left without having had a proper goodbye but hopefully soon when i go back for my graduation i'll get to see everyone and say a proper goodbye um very excited for that and then after that um during my time at cambridge um and mostly during the pandemic um i met elizabeth thoroughly and we have now become basically the best of friends and i think as as ali said we friendship signal quite a lot um so i think everyone knows that we are really really close and one thing i've learned from elizabeth is definitely just unconditional love it gives you this sense of reassurance and warmth and it's just so so important and i think we probably all have it in different forms with different people in our lives but with her it's just like you know um whatever it is i know i can tell her however weird or um personal things we've shared so much with each other and it's just 
it's there and you know like when you're having a bad day knowing that you can just call someone being like i have a bad day i don't really want to talk to you but can you just be there uh, that's quite reassuring to have that kind of presence in your life and um it just really showed me that having that kind of support of having someone there 24 7 taking into account time difference um it is it is very very good and you know whenever something is not going well at work and you just want to have a little rant i can just send that message without having to you know preface it with oh how are you today how's life um just having a bit of a bad day there's none of that it's literally just guess what this happened um and whenever it's not just about bad things right it's also good things you know you can share knowing that the other person is 100 supportive um there's no like they are equally happy for you they are equally sad for you when bad things happen they get more angry than you about things that happens to you so i think it's, it's just it's just so so powerful and i really hope that everyone has some sort of unconditional love in their life because it just brings so much confidence and warmth in your life so thank you lizzie and then after my phd i started this job as a program manager at the business school in oxford university and again i had a female manager i've had a history of female managers so literally my phd i had two female managers basically i did an internship i had a female manager I did my first job, I had a female manager. Currently, as a consultant on my team, I have a female manager. And I think it's, it's so different because before that, I did not have a female manager on my different project. And I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying it's a very different experience because um, women tend to, tend to, I know it's, a, it's not a generalization, but like women tend to be a lot more understanding as managers. But basically, going back to my Oxford job, my manager was um, Zainab, who also used to be a friend of mine from Oxford. Um, she was doing her PhD when I was doing my undergrad and we kind of crossed paths. We, we didn't know each other that well. Um, but then when I started my job, she was my manager. And it was just so nice. I just, I loved working with her and she was my manager, but she, <laughs> I just loved working with her. The one thing I learned from her is how to be a good mentor as a woman, you know, like a woman tour kind of situation, but in a sense of how to give constructive feedback, how to give um, positive feedback, everything, right? Because at the beginning we had this whole chat of okay look this is how i work i'm very direct so if there's something that you're doing that i don't like i will tell you and this is not personal and you know you need to disassoci disassociate your um performance at your job to you right so therefore when someone is making a comment about your work it doesn't mean that they think you're stupid right it's just it's about the piece of work and she made that very clear from the beginning which is very reassuring and then whenever she will give constructive feedback the, the way she did it was incredible right she'd be like this bit was good um, but this bit was less good and it, it was less good for these reasons do you agree and then we would have a conversation for example if something is unclear and i think that okay but the reason i did this was this and then we can have a conversation but what i don't like is when you get feedback and it is a bit um unclear so if someone is like can you improve this and you're like okay where right so having actionable points is great so she would always say i don't think this is good and my problems with this are particularly this 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 and this and i think you can address these in these ways and the addressable points can be something we discuss together but just having a clear idea of which part of the work does the person not like is very helpful and just that way of constructive feedback was great and she's also very good at appreciating when you've done something well or you've gone out of your way to do something well 
And she was also against toxic productivity. So she'll be like, if you're working after your working hours and you are not meant to be working, I will not be impressed. I will think that you're not managing your time well because you should not be working after your working hours. So even that is just very good because it, it takes away this thing of like, well, if I show my manager that I've been working very late, she will like me. Um, so there was no need to do that. And also just she is very good at maintaining a very solid boundary between work and life balance, which is something I miss. Um, but yeah, so she was very good at this. Um, we've both left the center now at the business school and she has launched her own business. And I think I will put the link in the description box if it's live and if she's okay with it. Um, but she's doing some sort of consulting as well. Um, she's very, very cool. And she's also funny, but I think I was funnier than her. I don't know, but yeah. And finally, I guess a little extra is if I had to pick a famous person who, you know, I don't know yet, um, who has also impacted my life in some way, it's definitely Roddy um, Shetty. So Roddy is G Shetty's wife. I, I hate that I introduce her like that, but um, she herself is a very accomplished woman. She talks a lot about um, self-love, self-improvement, and she's very honest about how she has felt in the past, about the bad feelings that she's had, about self, um, self in, in, what do you call it, like introspection, like basically looking into why are you having these bad thoughts about someone or why are you feeling bad about this situation and really looking deep into maybe it is my issue rather than the other person's issue and I think this has been quite useful and I think the lesson from this is literally to accept your imperfections it doesn't mean that you don't change right obviously it's entirely up to you if you are aiming towards um, you know self-improvement and continuous growth and stuff like that then yes you need to improve on things that you're not very good at but I think step one is just acknowledging our shortcomings and acknowledging how we feel about things how we react about things is that related to a trauma is that related to past experiences to insecurities and it's just this self-awareness is very important because it shapes then our reaction and even makes us a bit more empathetic to people and their reactions to things the one thing with her that really really resonated with me and had a lasting impact is she said um, she had a nasty experience with a stranger who basically was shouting at her and stuff and her first instinct was obviously I want to shout back like why is this person treating me this way um, but then she said obviously not in that time but afterwards when she had some time to think about it being removed from the situation um, she said that imagine if someone who you don't know is um, projecting such bad energy to a stranger that they don't know and is being so horrible to someone they don't know for no good reason um, then imagine what's going on inside there's so much more going on inside and then um, she, she took that to like different examples where she talks about, you know, how if someone is treating you badly um, and you do not deserve that treatment, then imagine how they're treating themselves because what's coming up to the surface is only what we see. But for it to be that bad when it's coming out of the surface, imagine what's going on underneath. How, how does that person treat themselves? How do they view their own lives? How do they... Um, you know, how do they speak to themselves? And that, that was very useful to think that, okay, maybe this person is in pain or maybe they're not in pain, maybe they're just having a bad day. But even that, you know, just makes you realize that, okay, maybe this person is having a bad day. It is not about me. Um, and this helps you deal with bad situations and also helps you not have bad energy and bad thoughts about other people. But yeah, overall, she's just really cool. She's really fun. And I hope that one day I get to meet her. I've been on a Zoom call with her, but we haven't had a one-on-one -on -one chat yet. I feel like we can be friends. So let's hopefully make this happen. Um, but yeah, so these were hopefully helpful lessons for everyone. Just a reminder to be appreciative and grateful for all the wonderful women around us. Whoever you see today, you know, tell them happy Women's Day. And remember to say thank you to those who have helped you in any 
potential ways or um, just appreciating the women in our lives because they have done directly or indirectly they have impacted the way we are and our lives in general um, so let's just appreciate every woman out there and I hope that these lessons are useful or just they're a reminder you know of the things that should be important to us but these are the things that I am definitely very proud of and very grateful for um, especially all the wonderful women in my lives but also to all of you out there in my audience thank you so much for the support and I wish every single one of you a happy International Women's Day and I hope that next year we can have maybe I mean because I wanted to do an in-person thing for International Women's Day in Dubai but because of Covid I thought that it might be a little bit difficult to organize but hopefully next year maybe we can have a big get together and celebrate Women's Day so fingers crossed for better times until then I hope you have a wonderful day thank you for being here and I'm sending you lots of love bye see you next time